Hello, it's Roshin Curie here. You're very welcome to my channel. Painting the sky is one of the most common things you're ever going to encounter, obviously, because you know, if you're outdoors, well, you're gonna have a sky. Um, in Ireland, we have a lot of clouds. As you can see, there's some clouds today. Um, but you know, painting a sky and getting it right, getting it to look light and airy, it's one of the easiest things that you could possibly learn to do as a sketcher. I was in the beautiful Burren in County Clare um, painting such a sky and it was glorious and the wildflowers were stunning and everything was beautiful. And I thought that you might like to see how I paint a sky very, very quickly. Now, I, I will show you the sky that I did. This one is only A6 in size. So I guess the full landscape that I did is only A5. So I didn't get much of a chance to sort of flex my, my, my paintbrush muscles or whatever you like to say. But still, it's, it's important to capture it in a very, very light way, big or small. And I'm going to show you how I did that. You won't see much going on when I was in the field in the burn because I suppose the whole thing happens pretty fast. But I'm going to recreate it for you so that you can see what I did um, and, and, and you'll be able to do it for yourself. I assure you, it is really, really easy it's very simple um, and I'm going to tell you how to do it so hopefully with a little bit of practice you will be able to get a really light airy fresh sky with no trouble at all there's really nothing quite like the burn in County Clare just south of my home in Galway from about May onwards until the middle of the autumn it's an absolute paradise of wildflowers and I like nothing better than to go for a walk there and just chill out. Now I've got my sketch pocket here and I've taken out my little black Hannah Moola 100% cotton sketchbook in the A6 size. And I've kept the two pages down with my magnetic clips. And the pen I'm using is a Sailor Food A 55 degree pen. My companion, as you may have guessed, is Reuben. Reuben is my good friend. So the ink I'm using here, for no particular reason other than that I like it, is Roland Klingner's sketch ink in Frida. It's a deep, deep bluey indigo colour. And the 55 degree Fude pen, the Fude nib, means that I can get a really expressive line trying to get the shape of the hill, the valleys and the little path that winds its way along along the stone wall towards the distant mountain. It doesn't take me long to get the basics down with my pen and I'm moving the magnetic clips so that I don't cover up the sky area because that's where I nearly always start at the top and work my way downwards for the very practical reason that you won't put your hand on wet paper if you start at the top and work downwards. Now I'm using a water brush and this one is a Sakura and it's a really, really good make. I mean, there's loads of water brushes you can get, but some of them can be a bit leaky. So that's why I particularly like this one. The first thing I do is identify the shapes of the clouds and I paint clean water around the shapes of the clouds with the tip of my brush. And then I fill in all the bits that aren't cloud with clean water. Not too much, not too little. And then I mix up a little puddle of blue. So in this case, I'm using phthalo blue and a little bit of ultramarine as well, just to have that variation in colour. I always think that looks really nice. And then I apply that little puddle of blue to the area that I have designated for blue sky. And because the page has just been wet, by me, it means that you'll get a nice smooth result. It won't be all blotchy. So I'm making sure to go in around the edges of the cloud and whatever I do, I do not touch any of the white area that's going to be cloud. As long as I leave it untouched and completely dry, no color will flow into it. So much as you might be tempted to touch it or wet it or fill it in, just don't resist the temptation. Now, you might wonder, should I make the shape of a cloud with my pen line? You can if you like, but 
if you can sort of guess where your cloud is going to go because when you put the clean water down obviously you can't see the outline it's better it's better if you don't do any outline for a more fluffy look so here i am recreating this little shape of the hills at home in the studio i've drawn my line with the sketch ink and freed again and this is the general shape of the fluffy cloud okay and now i'm going to take my brush this isn't a sakura travel brush this is a brush more for well it is a travel brush it's a it's a rosemary and co or 13 which is a wonderful brush and i've wet it and i'm using it to outline the shapes of my clouds and now I'm putting on clean water anywhere that isn't cloud. So I just painted it. Now you can't see where you're painting because it's just clean water. So you kind of have to pay attention to where you've just put the clean water. Because remember, anywhere there's water is going to, the colour is going to run into it. So I've got my clean water and now I've mixed up a little puddle of phthalo blue. And then painting it onto the page, onto the wet area. And because it's wet, I won't end up with horrible brush strokes. And remember, the second your paint is dry, it's going to leave a hard line at the edge. And you don't want a hard line on a sky. You want a nice, smooth sky. You can also see that I'm mixing my two blues there from ultramarine back to phthalo blue and back again. Because personally, I like to have a little bit of variation in the blue but you don't have to that's not a rule that's just a personal taste thing i think it's nice it makes a sky look kind of lively so as you can see i'm using the tip of the pointy brush to go around the clouds and remember if you want to use if you want to buy a brush from rosemary and co use the code roshin2024 or o i s i n 2024 because that's my code. This is a fantastic brush, the OR13. It's a travel brush and it is super, super versatile. It's a mixture of synthetic and sable and it's got a lovely point. So the mixture of synthetic and sable is great for all kinds of applications. The synthetic bit keeps the point nice and strong and the sable bit means that you can put a lot of pigment, a lot of water into your brush. So here I am in the field and I've done this exact same thing. That's what I've done. I've filled in all around the clouds with blue and now I'm switching to a different set of paints. Now this set of paints is one I put together myself. It's a selection of super granulating paints by Schmincke. Now you can't buy the little set that I have here. That's something I put together myself, but I just bought the tubes of paint I think they're from the special edition range by Schmincke. And I squeeze them into half pan and then I put them into this little tray here. And the reason I do that is because I do like the super granulating colours. They're very soft and they are ideal for the kind of threatening bit that you get at the bottom of the clouds. And my favourite colour for the threatening bit at the bottoms of the clouds, there's lots of colours you could use, but of the super granulating colours I like undersea is it deep sea hang on deep sea violet i think that's what it's called deep sea violet because it's just there it is it's a lovely soft grayish purple color and it's ideal if you don't have super granulating colors then mix paints gray with a tiny little bit of either mineral violet or maybe a little bit of burnt umber you can work it out yourself just basically look out the window look at the threatening bit at the bottom of the clouds i'm looking out the window right now as we're watching this and I can see, I think I would do Payne's Grey mostly with a tiny bit of mineral violet. And then maybe I'd go up a little bit more burnt umber as I go up towards the top. So I add that little bit of colour at the bottom. And just as I did with the blue sky, I started off by dropping some clean water into the bottom half of the clouds. I emphasise the bottom half of the clouds because remember, wherever there's wet, the colour will trickle upwards and we don't want that in the cloud. We want the top half to remain nice and white and fluffy. So we're going to keep those clouds. Anything you want to have white and fluffy, look, there they are. You need to keep it dry. So here's my completed sketch full of wildflowers and a little path. Just the most perfect afternoon spent with my lovely little dog Ruben and my good friend who's done all the filming.
Well, I have a very reluctant Reuben here who doesn't want to be on camera um, because he wants to chase his little, uh, well, I don't know if it's a giraffe or what, what it is at the moment because it's kind of beyond recognition. But anyway, here he is. This is his job and he has to just, you know, accept it. So I hope you've picked up something from that little video on how to paint a sky. Uh, it really doesn't matter what blue you use. That's kind of up to yourself. You'll work it out yourself as to what blue you'd like. So just keep practicing. Get out there. The sky is always there. Sometimes it's blue. Sometimes it's completely clouded over. But you'll get enough chances, I hope, to soon be an absolute pro when it comes to capturing a nice fresh blue sky for all sorts of landscape situations wherever you might be or I don't know down at the beach or there's always a reason to lash in a sky and with practice you'll find it'll only take you just a couple of minutes to throw it in and hopefully it will work really beautifully for you time after time. All right Ruben at ease. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for lots more videos of sketching in beautiful West of Ireland. See you next time.